and a landslide forces highway to close. Korean naval ships visit Port Moresby. And opening ceremony to showcase PNG culture. This is National MTV News with Lorraine Gabina. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Saturday's news. A landslide at Wyam Village, about 10 minutes' drive out of Wabig Town, has been blocked off road access into the provincial town from Western Highlands. The landslide happened during the early hours of this morning and is a result of continuous rainfall in the province. Locals have opened up a temporary road and are charging 50 kina for every vehicle that passes. No casualties have yet been reported. A small reception was staged last night in Port Mosby to welcome the 16 FIFA teams that will be taking part in the World Cup. It was hosted by NCD Governor Poes Pakop and attended by representatives of the 16 teams. The event was one way of promoting the diversity of Papua New Guinea and making the athletes feel at home. The reception was staged in a Melanesian way with traditional dances welcoming each delegation as they entered the venue. It involved dances from the autonomous region of Bougainville, Kairuku in the central province, and selected groups from the Highlands region. Welcome to our beautiful country, Papua New Guinea. President of the PNG Football Association, David Chung, said the World Cup is something huge for PNG and says it will leave behind a legacy. It's a great privilege and honor for the Football Association of Papua New Guinea to be hosting this event. The welcome reception gave an insight into Port Moresby as the host city. With less than 24 hours to go before the opening FIFA matches, the Prime Minister, Sports Minister and the NCD Governor are thankful for the support they received from the FIFA officials and other supporting bodies who have made it possible for the World Cup to be held here in Papua New Guinea. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill said as a country, PNG faced a number of challenges in preparing for the World Cup. However, the time has come and PNG stands ready to give its best in hosting one of the biggest sporting events in its history. I know that uh, our teams will have a, uh, a host football, play the football in a good spirit of a good sportsmanship. And I extend the uh, best wishes to each and all the teams who have come from very far, far away places. Host Governor Poe Spakop said Port Mosby is ready to give the visiting athletes a memorable experience during their stay in PNG and urge them to be ambassadors of PNG. Our people from a thousand tribes, 860 languages are here. They're ready to welcome you, ready to give you an experience we hope and I'm certain you'll never forget. All FIFA matches will be televised live on MTV throughout the two weeks of the World Cup. Takla Gunga, National MTV News. Two Navy ships from the Republic of Korea visited Port Moresby this morning. The purpose of their visit is to enhance military ties between Papua New Guinea Defense Force and the Republic of Korea military. President present to welcome the crew were members of the Korean Embassy, the PNG Defense Force Navy and military personnel, the police and invited guests. 600 sailors, including 130 midshipmen on board two Korean naval vessels, Roks Chung Mung Gyeong In San Sin and Roks Cheong Chi, sailed into Port Mosby. They are attached to 71st Division of the Republic of Korea Naval Academy, visiting 13 ports in 12 nations, including Papua New Guinea. The Korean Naval Academy is the Korean Naval Academy. 순방 국가의 우호 증진을 위해서 이곳 파푸아 뉴기니아를 방문했습니다. This is the 63rd Rock Navy Cross Training since it was initiated in 1954, which aims to provide expertise and onboard experience for midshipmen in the fourth year of the Naval Academy. 
Their visit ends the Republic of Korea's military cooperation with Papua New Guinea Defense Force Navy in a big way. Over the next two days, they'll be more or less like visiting places. And, and, uh, and after this, this afternoon, the, we'll be down at Ella Beach, the Memorial Park, the Reed Lane. From there, uh, the task group commander will pay a courtesy call to the, our uh, commander of the uh, Defense Force. Defense Force and, uh, and uh, the Minister. Within the two days, they will be making courtesy visits to distinguished guests, remembrance parks, and cultural sites. An onboard reception will commence this afternoon. My name is uh, Rebecca Bai. Uh, our school is uh, Rainbow Christian School. So today we came here, is, uh, we want to welcome Korean Navy ships. We are participate uh, with the parents and then students and the teachers. So we are very happy to see our uh, Navy. Uh, this time we come low here, uh, bring our children for uh, uh, welcome cer ceremony. The Rock Navy cruise training will end its exercise on Monday before it sails to Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam and China. Eric Arupma, National MTV News. Moribe Governor Kelly Naru says the breakup of the 2017 national budget will affect service delivery into rural Morbe. Thus, the governor urged all Morbe MPs to work together to bring in the vital government services. He made these remarks at the official opening of the new Arab market along the Okuk Highway. Governor Naru says working together in delivering basic government services into the rural areas is the way forward for 2017. Naru says the 2017 budget saw the 33 allergies of Morobe province missing out on the budget. Apart from that, 10,000 kina was given to each of the wards to carry out services. He is calling on other MPs to support their ward councillors with the DSIP funds they have received. Now, so was government even thinking this black and passing long, giving money long, ward council, not too long, all LLG. Long four years ago, time we played this in government. And me looking at them, all get a development, now sit down, now walk long place. The governor made these remarks when applauding the people of Wine Arab LLZ for the successful opening of their new market yesterday. The market comes with water supply, electricity and proper sanitation. LLG president Charlie Foyke says the new market will assist women and young girls to sell their produce close to the village, then to travel down to Nadzab market to sell their fresh produce. Oike has also called on health inspectors to inspect roadside markets to make sure good market hygiene is maintained at all times. Mata Luis, National MTV News, Lay. Third graduation for pioneers and Poppendetta Town sees an increase in murder cases. Those stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. A non-governmental organization which had helped in funding projects for Ting Elementary School in Lei, West Taraka, yesterday witnessed the third graduation for the Pioneers since its establishment in 2014. Lei's Rotary Club helped raise 20,000 kina early this year to build a double classroom for the school. Yesterday, a total of 42 grade 2 students graduated with certificates and awards. The elementary school which has been operating without full government subsidies and whose teachers work without pay has successfully graduated 42 grade 2 students. These students are the pioneers of the school since it began in 2014. Head teacher Tine Pagao says though the teachers were not on payroll, they continued giving their service because of their love to teach. This year, the school was given materials worth 20,000 kina by Lay Rotary Club 
to build a double classroom for these graduates. The organization recently worked on the school's toilet facilities and septic systems for the students. Lay Rotary Club representative Gary Halewood, who was present at the graduation ceremony, says education is one of the key functions of the organization. Ting Elementary uh, had, a, had a great attitude when we first met them. Um, they had started doing their own um, work towards completion of the first double classroom. Um, and we're hopeful that they're going to do the same for the future uh, classrooms. Lay Rotary has also funded other schools with the distribution of more than 800 desks and has helped funded a water project at Unitech Habitat. Hellwood said consultations are underway with a Rotary club in Australia who will assist with another classroom building project for Ting Elementary School. So if we can put that all together, um, hopefully we'll have something to go back to them by um, the end of next week. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. The increase in number of murder cases in Northern Province recently has prompted police to strengthen their operations. Chief Inspector Lincoln Gerari told MTV News police have been tasked to these crime scenes to allow normalcy to return in the communities. Fabian Hakalitz with this report from Popendata. According to the Provincial Police Commander, 11 murder cases have been registered from August till yesterday. All this that's related to drug and alcohol, sorcery with land disputes. Uh, just recently, uh, last night, we had about one, or about three. Uh, on Sunday, it was up at uh, Kokoda after the uh, Rugby League um, Grand Final. And again, yesterday was at uh, Jonita, and one of them, one of the murders up at uh, Sakita area. The suspect of the Jonita murder case has surrendered to police, and police are now investigating this case. However, medical officials from Papua at the General Hospital refused to provide reports confirming his death to MTV upon a query. They are trying to establish how and where the person was uh, been speared. So, yes, the investigation is continue. And uh, as soon as the, the person is arrested and charged, we will, we will let the public know what's happening. Now, search is also continuing for the premeditated murder of the late John Perra at Kokoda Station on Sunday. The suspect, also an escapee from Waitape in Central Province, is wanted by police for four murder cases. In Papua Nita, Northern Province, Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. The police training college is drafting up a use of force paper. If approved, it will become the firearms policy, which will be executed by the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary. In an interview with MTV News, the police training college commandant, Pero Indrano, explained that paper will be presented to police commissioner Gary Baki during the commissioner's annual conference. The paper aims to address the illegal use of firearms and give permits to police officers who who are allocated firearms for operations. I'm uh, writing up a uh, use of force paper for the police commissioners conference, which that it comes about annually, and we commissioners are required to present papers where commissioners are interested, and he's interested in that one. The paper is basically to um, put it a proper firearm policy, so that in future, if it's approved, Policemen are given permit to use firearm annually. The Southern Highlands and Hela provinces have signed a communique over their share of proceeds from the LNG project. This signing is the first step to an agreement which will be signed by provincial leaders from both provinces. This communique signing is an understanding between the Southern Islands and Ella provinces to have equal say over benefits from the LNG projects. At the moment, all benefits are committed to the Southern Islands province. We have entered in, into an undertaking to share the development levy funds and other LNG benefit streams uh, between the Hela and Southern Islands provincial government and our uh, people that we represent 
on a fair, equitable, and justifiable basis between the two provinces. Southern Islands Province Governor William Poe welcomed the decision by his counterpart of Ella Province Governor-elect Francis Potape for taking this initiative. This is a significant breakthrough for both provinces after a consultative decision with the SHP and Ella Provincial Governments. It's going to be fair, one that is, will be of fair, equitable and also justifiable so that our people will also be happy. The decision, that, the final decision will be the, the signing of the uh, agreement. A formal agreement between the two provinces will come after the communique through their respective provincial executive councils. Eric Arupma, National MTV News. Turning overseas now, President-elect Donald Trump responded to the protests that rocked Oakland and Portland unfair and alternately praises demonstrators for their passion for our great country. Protesters fueled ang by anger, disbelief and some for fears of deportation continue into the third day of protests. Trump responded to protests against his election victory in Oakland and Portland with two distinctively different tweets. The first tweet called the protests unfair and accused the media of inciting violence and suggested those demonstrating were paid professional protesters. Another tweet from his account that came nearly nine hours later took an absolutely different tone. The tweet read, love the fact that the small group of protesters last night have passion for our great country. We will all come together and be proud. Demonstrators took to the streets across in Portland and Oakland, voicing fears that the real estate tycoon's political triumph would deal a blow to civil rights. The demonstrations continued into the day as Portland police arrested a handful of protesters and used pepper spray and rubber bullets in an attempt to disperse the crowd. Hundreds of protesters in Oakland, California walked the streets and made it into Interstate 580, bringing traffic to a standstill. Meanwhile, questions have emerged over Trump policies and promises. Will Trump still build the Mexican wall? Will he really repeal Obamacare like he said he would? Or were these just the usual campaign talks to win the presidential race? Melissa Gavirro, MTV World News. And True Guy Sports is next. Stay with us. Sports. Welcome to True Guys Sports. Football fans around the world as well as participating teams will catch a glimpse of Papua New Guinea's unique and diverse culture during the kickoff show prior to the Papua New Guinea and Brazil match. The game kicks off at the Sir John Guy Stadium tomorrow on the 13th of November at 7 p.m. after Sweden and Korea DPR at 4 p.m. A 10-minute kickoff show will showcase the cultures from the four regions of Papua New Guinea and welcome the biggest ever football tournament in the country. The first match at the Sejongai Stadium tomorrow will be at 4 p.m. between Sweden and Korea DPR, with the gates opening to the public at 2 p.m. Similar to the Pacific Games, people with vehicles will use the park and ride service provided by the host city, NCDC, to and from the stadiums. Vehicle owners will have to park their vehicles at the Unagi Oval and get on the shuttle bus and be dropped off at the stadium. This service will be available for matches that will be held at the Sejong Guy Stadium and the PNG Football Stadium. For other matches scheduled at the National Football Stadium and Bava Park, vehicle owners will have to park their vehicles and walk from the Barocco Market to the stadiums. Prohibited items such as firearms, sharp objects, food and drinks, betel nut and lime and mustard will not be allowed in the stadium. However, exception is made for traditional instruments like kundu and garamut and will be allowed into the stadium by supporters to help create a vibrant atmosphere. A priority lane will be created with the number of roads around the match venues closed off to allow spectators safe entry and exit to the venues during the tournament. 
MTV will be televising the main matches between PNG and Brazil at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. Spain and Canada will face each other in one of the four opening matches of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup tomorrow. Both teams are pumped up to give their best opening shot and a seemingly confident Canada coach, Daniel Worthington, said the Spanish team comprises of a good mix of players and his team will play their best football tomorrow. Canada coach Daniel Worthington said it is going to be a tough match against Spain and likewise for Japan and Nigeria in the Pool B. Like I said before, it's one game at a time and our key focus now is Spain and what we've been working on is our identity because at the end of the day success is going to be our beat. We do things consistently well and as a team of staff we've been working hard behind the scenes to help these young players in the best shape of the best tactics available to them and work to our strengths. So right now the focus is on Spain. When asked if the new playing environment will affect the team's prowess in any way, Canada captain Bianca St. George admitted it is going to be challenging but it will not stop them from playing the best football. Uh, the weather here is not like Canada. Um, we haven't really had these kind of temperatures before but We've been here, I think, early enough to acclimate to this situation and we've been um, having a really good sleeping schedule to make us uh, get rid of our jet lag. So I don't feel like it's going to wor worry me a lot because, like I said, we prepare for it a lot and again, it's, gonna, <laughs> it's all going to be up to how, how we play. Not, we can't just blame it on the weather. So yeah, it's going to be hard. but. I think we're a good team enough to uh, pass through that. Meanwhile, a calculating Spain coach, Pedro Lopez, is out of the challenge the Canadians will pose for his team, as they have some very good key players that will sway the game to Spain's disadvantage. Um, Canada is a team that I admire a lot. I think they're very well organized and uh, they've got key players that can change up the game. I've uh, followed them throughout the different stages and I think they're, uh, they're a good rival. We'll have to see tomorrow. Nonetheless, he Come is on, adamant his team gonna, will give the Canadians a good opening run. Dini Rose Raiko, National MTV Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports. We'll take a look, a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow after the break. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Now taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the New Guinea Islands only. It's fine in Lorengau, a shower at two in Kaviang and in Kimbe, Kokopo, Rabaul and Buka expecting thundery shower or two. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield with doing with Dulux. And that has been the news, sports and weather for this Saturday, the 12th of November 2016. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Lorraine Gabina. Pleasant viewing. Good night.